The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, Dr. Chapman here. All this Monday, the 10th of January, beginning of a new week, and we're looking at the beginning of the new week, seeing huge selling. Look, the Dow's down 413 at 35,822, uh, right on the 50 period exponential moving average. That peak D is uh, probably going to have a down arrow saying. The daily has now gone from a sell signal to a sell mode all in one move. And I've spoken to subscribers to my opening call about this doji candle. Is it going to be a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside? Or is this where you get some kind of a reversal to the upside attempt, at least for a short-term bounce? We haven't got the bounce yet. Now what we're looking at is the S&P. This is the S&P 500 trading down 71 and 46.05. It just, this is still a leg A to the downside. Uh, if I have a chance during the show, I'll talk about these single legs down and what they can imply. But uh, let's just see where we are in about uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, if there is some kind of a bounce, let's just look at the futures. Or is there some kind of a uh, bounce attempt? Well, the candle is not there. That's trough C, trough D, E, trough F we've got. And we'll see whether or not we can. Let me just put this in here. That's a D, that's an E, and that's an F. And the 10-minute chart, let's just see what the one-minute chart is showing. Uh, let's go. There you are. Yep, this is the first attempt at a rally uh, that might have a little bit of legs. We're at 45.99 after being down at 45.91, round number low. We're at 45.99, nine points above that. So what we need to see is that by the end of my show at 11 o'clock, the S&P, if it's going to have any kind of substantial rebound, and I'm only calling it a bounce because uh, we're in sell modes in all the indices, it needs to be trading at 46.13 to 46.15. Uh, trading, I mean trading, holding it and using that as support as it keeps trying to bounce higher. So let's go back to our story here. We've got the QQQ. This is the index 100. Been warning about this for quite some time. That there's great vulnerability here, and uh, but it doesn't really show in the chart of the of the. Uh, it does a little bit in the daily, but not the weekly. Weekly has just gone from the upper boundary, in, Chapman Wave inside track. Repellent loan down to the propellant loan, <clears throat> propellant zone, and now it's a tad under the 14 period moving average. I will say, I can just tell you that if at any point this week there is a close below the low of four weeks ago, which is at 45, let's see, 45.08. Let's just make that 45. Ah, 45.31. <clears throat> if there's a close under 40, 45.30 at any point in the next week, that's going to be significant because what it's going to say is that now there's a really good chance that in January <clears throat> we get the kind of red candle that allows February to identify a peak B top in the monthly. And that's that's a big possibility right now. And I'm going to go through other things. I've got a lot of questions. I'll try to deal with it right now because we want to also look at the big picture. One of the reasons why we've raised so much cash, we have um, just core positions and we've lightened up even on those is because I, I've not liked this market for a little while. And we've just been waiting and waiting to see um, how the Dow, which was the last one to make its high, starts to pull back. And now it's showing that, it's, that the selling is coming in deep. I just want to show this here. Home Depot is part of the Dow. Look at this. Home Depot is down 2.5%, uh, down 990 at 383. Now, this is very interesting. You see this peak F at 420.61. HD is a symbol. Trading at 383.75, down 986. Well, at 420.61 on the 6th of December, it comes tumbling down to 380. And then it rallies. And I've been talking about these double top patterns that are, are so frequent. And they are so, um, <coughs> they are, they are uncanny in the sense that the price goes to within pennies sometimes. In this case, yeah, it was within less than $3 of the all-time high. But then it makes this V-shaped pattern 
in the weekly chart and kaboop, it comes tumbling down. So I have to consider that even Home Depot, great company uh, in a great area of the market, building materials, appliances, home, electronics, just the works, paints, you know, name it, um, is seeing a lot of selling. And one of the reasons is if you look at the HGX, and I showed this to subscribers from opening call over the weekend in my overview, um, 530.41 was the high back in early December. And then the third, third, fourth week of December, it goes to 531.14, less than a dollar higher, 70 something cents. And then look at this tumble. There's another double top. So we've got, this is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. You've got to respect when these things are occurring one after the other, and we see the rotation <clears throat> start to impact the best of the best. And I'm going to go to the SMHs right now because it's all tied in. The SMHs, look at this rectangle formation. 318.82 is the high on the 22nd of November. This is a semiconductor ETF. And what does it do? It tumbles down to the 389, 290, 289 area. And then rallies right back to 318.69 within pennies of its all-time high. And then it tumbles down, and now it's about to take out the left side trough low. <clears throat> and that will be at 280, give it to you exactly, 288.14. We're already at 290, down 6.90. <clears throat> and yet, when you look at the overall pattern, it's just a little hiccup. It's just kind of ho-hum. So I had a couple of questions. One is, yes, it's all very well trying to uh, t attempt to short the SMHs, but where would you put in a buy signal or a buy, a starter position for the much longer term? Since this is the area that if there's getting, there are going to be higher highs and the monthly chart of the uh, S&P in leg B suggests there should still be a C and a D in the Chapman Way methodology, surely that would be an area, as it always has been, that leads the market back up. Well, let's just be as brutally honest as possible with a chart pattern. This very much looks like distribution. And distribution suggests <coughs> that big money is starting to pull out of longer term positions, possibly even positions that have been there for years sometimes. So we have to treat this with a lot of respect and say, well, Let's, before we actually talk about buying, let's talk about what what would incur the wrath of the SMHs if what what support level is key. Well, it's at a support level right now, but I would just suggest to you that any close under 278, which is a little bit down at 11 points, 12 points from where we are, a close below that would suggest now you're impacting the weekly chart this looks like an isolated leg to the upside that made a double top and is now about to give back at least into this ugly bar, sorry, into this beautiful bar, I meant to say, of the 5th of November, a low of 272 and a high of 299. And that would be it. And what, what, would, what would suggest that it's going to do that? Because the middle of the bar is at about 285. If there is a close on a weekly basis below 285, it makes the rest of that candle highly vulnerable and you are decisive, decisively below the 40 degree breathing average. But wait a minute, the green line is still way above the 40. I need to talk about this. So are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Trapper here, Tiger Technicians Hour, and also the author of the opening call daily newsletter where we've been raising cash and cash, cash, cash for a while now because we are anticipating that this market, the rotation is going through the different sectors, and until today might be the day we get everything going down with almost the same percentages, we're getting closer and closer to some kind of uh, at least test of good support. Um, you've got to just be really careful. Now, what I am looking at you, I had a question in the den about TRT. I was actually thinking I was going to TLT, which is the bonds. This is TRT, Triptech International, trading at 9.30, down 65 cents. I did this the other day, and I said it's made in the Chapman wave. I, I, I don't know if I want to do this right now. There's a technique I developed over the many, many years that I've had Chapman Wave methodology notation uh, with peak D going to EF and maybe even a G, but recycling. But I also learned you know, a long time ago, we used to have someone in the den um, who used to always look at currencies and the EUR, USD, the euro used to so often make these tops where it went just fractionally, just instead of Leg D, it stalled underneath the left side peak C, and it confirmed the technique that I've been developing for years of a peak C1, C2, meaning that everything about it, the MACD, the stochastic, just everything about it was suggesting that that could have gone one tick higher or two ticks higher to make it leg D. It didn't, but everything about it was, in fact, the D that concludes, or not, not necessarily concludes, but is the objective of a Chapman Wave buy signal to buy mode, going to at least four higher peaks, peak D. That's where you've got to be a little careful and reassess. Now, this became peak C1, C2, just fractionally underneath the left side high of mid-December, and now it's trading with a cup formation, and it's gone more than one to one to the downside, and that says, so the question is, where, um, where would uh, I... I would like to, uh, where did it go? If you have time. Oh, um, I thought I saw something about where would you get in? Uh, let's see. I think you were in, I'm sure, I think you took profits. Yeah, so let me just do this. So at 9.30, the 50-period moving average is around about 9. I'm just going to suggest in this environment, I'd be real careful because the, the decline has gone below the left side high that was really important uh, back in November, which was peak E at 
11.08. And here we are at 9.38. So you have to consider that now the whole downside area of the eights is going to be important to test. And you've got the weekly chart of 14 period moving average of 8.66. I love the stock looking out. But at this particular point, I don't want to do anything other than to say to you, uh, I, I think you're actually out. You had profits, and I, I'm not sure. I would hold off a little bit. I'm just going to cover the same question I had you about uh, NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, I've been talking about it as fading off to the 319 round number low on the 22nd, making a 346.47 high, making lower lows and lower highs. And that it looked like it gone from to a sell mode in the daily, yes. But now it's confirming that the arch formation that I call the dreaded H in the weekly chart, trading at 258 down 14, has now confirmed that the weekly chart has gone into a sell mode. And I'm not changing this, I'm calling this a peak F in the monthly chart. So this is was one of your leaders, and that's the reason why I'm saying I, I know that. <laughs> Over the years, buying the semiconductors on er any major pullback was absolutely de, de, de rigor. That was the thing to do. I am saying this might be the change. I would hold off. You could nibble at some point, but please just have a little patience. And the reason I say that is because if NVIDIA starts to trade under the high that was made the week of the 3rd of September of 230.43, of I, I mean trade under that uh, for a couple of days, that's suggesting that you're going to have even maybe a chance of a, a head and shoulders pattern. I, I just wouldn't be there on the long side yet. Yes, a little later on maybe. I mean, it is a great company, but now I think it's being – the, the test is coming now of the whole semiconductor area. So with that said, let's go um, to the next – oh, uh, that was also advanced micro devices. Advanced micro devices. Also, just to, this right now we're looking at it at a lower low with a dreaded H pattern in the daily. It could have a bounce, but it would only be a bounce based on the weekly chart saying that the H pattern is alive and well. And that at 128 right now, down three and a half, there's a good chance that that 164 level will not, the all-time high made in uh, end of November will not be seen for quite a while. In fact, not even the 153, 155 area of the recent bounce, because this one looks like it really needs more time to digest, even if it goes sideways. Uh, next question I had was NKE. I'm, I'm skipping some of the things I usually do. NKE, they're all in the same pattern. Look at this, the dreaded H. Bam, okay, had that gap up reversal and now it's had a huge gap down massive gap down uh, at 150.44 down 654 and it means that the rectangle formation in the weekly chart has 144.37 is absolutely major uh, support in the weekly chart below that and it even impacts a peak d in the in the monthly chart so i'm taking this very seriously this decline next question i had so let me i have to i've, I've lost my rhythm i'm getting back to the rhythm and the rhythm says you've gone you haven't done the iwm iwm the russell 2000 is down at 100, 212, gap down. There's the H pattern holding a little bit better than the others. Did the one-to-one -one breakout of the falling X formation into the 226 level. Could not get to 228, which I said was imperative. In fact, it's pulling back. And now what we're looking at is there's a real good chance that the low of 209, 208.76, the low of the 20th, if that is taken out, that's the story that I always talk about in the rectangle formation. Let's just do that now because it's so important. There's so many patterns like this. Let me show you. The rectangle formation has been going on a lot longer than you would have expected. Certainly a lot longer than your patience. 234 area was the high back in April. Uh, 207 was the low uh, just two weeks later. And then we're looking at just trading sideways eventually goes to peak a peak c one c two pulls back sharply to the support of 27 and then bam it goes to leg d above the rectangle what's my rule with the rectangle formation especially the narrow rectangle formation eventually it comes down and retests the low and it could even break the low and then make a sine wave as it just trades up and down in between the big rectangle so 212 just be careful to close under 206 at any point in the next 
week and a half on the weekly chart would say, uh-oh, um, the IWM is under tremendous pressure, and that does make that a PD in the monthly chart. Let's go to uh, Earl in Seminole. Earl, how are you? Uh, good morning, Basil. I'm good great. Morning. Thank you. So uh, you're, you're going to take a, a closer look at the uh, IEF. Uh, I was wondering if you did that. Yes, I did. Just to, just to remind me, the symbol is not IEM, but IE. IEF. What, 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 what's the last symbol? X or uh, F? Or? Uh, IE Frank. Ah, uh, yeah, IEF. Okay, yep, I got it right here. And I did look at it, and I was talking about that trend line that had a hold, which is broken. I'll be back in a moment. IEF is the uh, Treasury Bond E. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. On with Earl and Sono, and what we're all looking at, I had a great question in the tent. Uh, Basil, perhaps this week you can discuss the Nifty 50 and how it relates to today. There's a lot of stuff that over the weekend I was doing, and I'm also reading a book. It's just a fascinating book. It goes back to all the bankers in in, 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 in Paris and in the 1880, 90 area, uh, 1900s. Um, just so many things are starting to tie in because the, a big question came in last week. Could you start talking about the CODA phase that you always talk about? Yeah, I will talk about that. It was interrupted, of course, by... COVID, 
And that interruption has almost created a restart. So that also takes me right to uh, Earl's question about the iShares 7 to 10 year Treasury bond ETF trading at a low of 112.48. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up is I, when I was looking at it, and I can't remember if it was during while we were talking last week or two weeks ago, um, I was talking about support. And I said, it's nicked the one support level but it's bounced back over it again. But you can see from Friday's action, Thursday actually, into this morning, look how it's plunged underneath the the trend, the upper trend line. Uh, I should say the lower trend line, rising trend line. And that means that this pattern that I normally call, let me make this pink, this is the weekly chart, let me make this green, what I normally call the Chapman inside track propellant zone or buy zone, we've just gone right through it and because it closed sharply under it last week, now I can say for the entire week, 114.10 is support that it has to close above this week if it wants to save the day. But really what we're looking at is, and you remember, Earl, we said looking at the TBT is really the way to go. That's the inversion of the TLT. So, I, you know, I... I don't see any change except it isn't a leg, Dean, and says, you know what, it's just a tad overbought, therefore you could get some kind of a bounce in uh, bonds so that yields can just pull back a little bit. But the major work has been done to say that if I put in a, now this is a technique that I do visually, you could, uh, you could notate it, but I, I like to do this visually. If you go to the TBT, and I know oh, you'll look at this very closely, and you look yeah. at the narrow range of the weekly <clears throat> chart, and you can just go to the week of the 23rd of July and go to the high of 17.91 uh, and the low of 1668. And you can see that no matter where it's gone above, and no matter where it's gone below, it keeps coming back into that level. And that says that in this particular pattern, if the TBT, this is the weekly chart, starts to trade any week, above, and I mean trade, that means the daily chart, if it starts to close any um, two out of three, I'd say, sessions above, and let me put that in right here. That would be the high that was made of 1903, 1901. Yep, 1903. So if there's a close on a weekly basis in the TBT above that 19, say, let's say 1910, which is really quite far away. It's at 1842 right now. It's going to take a little bit of work because it's on the 200 period moving average in the in the daily chart at 1787. That's your support and it's trading at 1842. You could see a wiggle and just a kind of a yo-yo pattern here if there is any strength at all in bonds. So that would take the TLT. So I'm trying to cover as many areas as possible so that we're talking apples to apples. So the TLT, which is the 20-year or greater Treasury bond fund, it's not the 7 or 10, but it is the 20-year, uh, that is saying that it is at this point stuck in a range. And if the TLT at any point, 140, 145, starts to trade under 140, two out of three sessions on the daily chart, that's going to impact yields even more. So, um, and I just wanted to show, this is what I showed subscribers to my opening call over the weekend. I always show it on the weekend. I'll show it now. So this is, if I can find it right there. This is the 30-year, the white is the 30-year TYX yield. The brown is the TNX 10-year yield. And the cyan, when it comes up, is the FVX 5-year yield. And look at the speed and the strength, the momentum, the torque of the five year, if it can come up, hello, one, two, three, here we go. Um, and as soon as you see the cyan colored one, come on, um, must be a busy day out there. It's coming, here we go, there you go. So as soon as you see that, look at that five year, which has gone from, uh, now not many things are used for the five year, but I like it as an indicator. The five year was once at 1.92, that's 0.19%, uh, percent. And it's trading right now at 15.40, 1.54. That is a massive move. 
But when you're talking historically and you go back to the 1980s, and many of us know that from the 1980s, a mortgage rates could have been anywhere between 15 and 17, even 18 percent. So this is nothing, but it is having an impact. Let me see why, why am I not getting this? Let me just get that. There it goes. There. So we're down on wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, and sharply down from the high of last week in the HGX, the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. So you can see, I would not treat anything right now as just a kind of a, a little blip, nothing to worry about. I think there's plenty to worry about here. And one of the reasons why I am quite concerned is that the IEF, which which you have pointed out to me, um, that move below the 200 period moving average, which is way at 115.72, suggests that there could be a bounce to the 113.63 area but then we've got to be really careful that it doesn't make another arch formation. Um, and that would be that that really would be tough. And one of the things that I'm talking about now, saying that there is a chance that we have a little bit of a bounce um, in the in the T in the bonds, so that yields can pull back a little bit, is because if you look at the XLF, which is at a spectacular move, had a gap up uh, rally from the 37s. And it went to peak A, peak B, peak C. And yes, leg D, a red candle, but making a new recovery high of 41.46 and now pulled back to 40.82. So in that regard, I'm just looking at this and saying, um, let's keep our eye on how the financials um, respond to what's going on in the bond market at this particular point. Um I hope that, that helps you. Yeah, Basil. My question was, or my what I'm wondering is, that if we get a severe market pullback, is the uh, is the bonds, the IEF, a uh, safe haven? Oh, oh, thank you so much for bringing that up. Because for decades, you you would hear me saying, when the market pulls back and the, and all the darlings start to decline sharply, money invariably migrates from the uh, vo volatility of equities into the so-called safety of bonds. Not this time. So that's, thank you for bringing that up because I had mentioned it about a week and a half ago. I think I brought it up last week, but I didn't make a big deal about it. I, to say, this is the first time that we're actually not seeing money come out of stocks and go into the safety of bonds. So that says there is something a little different. Hold on a second, because there's something else I wanted to show you, and that's J and K. Is the uh, uh, part of the I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, right, folks, we're back. Uh, so uh, what we're looking at here, and let me just ask the question, the important question right now, is, uh, Earl, are you still there? Yes, I am, by the way, okay. yes. So, Earl, I just wanted to mention to you the impact that we're seeing here in the bond market is, uh, is really full trading through all the different sectors, and if you look at JNK, which is the uh, junk bond, it's called uh, the Barclays High Yield Bond. Um, it made a peak C minus, it made a peak D and then an E in this double top. The pattern I've been talking about that impacts so many charts. It doesn't matter what, the, even if there's no connection whatsoever, the pattern is the same. And here it is. It made a high back in the week of uh, the 9th of July. At 110.10, pulls back sharply to 108, and then it goes to a high of 110.12. I mean, really, 110.10 and 110.12, two cents, and then it plunges, and now it's down at 106. And this is the Barclays High Yield Bond uh, Fund. So that that's not a good sign, and it's suggesting that if on the left side, the double bottom low, same thing as the top. It made a double bottom low, and we've seen a number of these in, in different markets. 106.48 on the 1st of December, 106.48 uh, the, uh, oh, so that is a D. Uh, yeah, A, B, C, yeah, that's still a C. Uh, on the um, 1st of December and the 26th of December. So what we're looking at here is, uh, at 106.66 right now, it's got the arch formation. If it starts to close decisively in the 105 area or under 105, wow, that's going to impact the yields even more. So all I can say is that within the context of the yields, just right now, we're seeing the greatest impact. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if in two weeks' time, we started to see some kind of a stabilization and that yields started to come down a little bit. But in the shorter term, we've got to watch these levels <laughs> very closely. So I hope that helps you. Yes, but what I was going to say is the 10-year note in less than a month has gone from 140 to 180. So that that is almost like a stock. That's a T and X dot X. There we go. Yeah. And it's gone to leg D. And this is, I mean, moves like this, besides being um, kind of abrasive to the market, it just say, you know, it just confuses the market completely. It is also saying, in a monthly basis, you've now got a leg C in the 10-year, in the monthly, and it's in a buy signal, where it's at 78% in the stochastic. If it was at 82%, I'd feel much more confident saying that it's in a buy mode in the monthly chart. But everything about it, the nine period moving average, really looks like it wants to tackle at some point in the first part of 2022, the high that was made 
1971, 1.971 back in November of 2019. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. And that is going to impact the market. Uh, it just says that you can now get very strong balances in the market, but to get this culmination of some kind of a low, um, not only will you have to get the VIX much, much higher, the volatility index, to get a turnaround that says now we could rally again for a few weeks, but he has the VIX at 23 in leg B in the daily chart. Now, if it closes anywhere in the 23s today, that's going to say, oh, watch out for Tuesday. But if it is able to pull back to 22.65 by the end of the day, that's at least a little bit of a comfort. But if it closes near this high, ooh, that's not so good. So, yeah, we're looking at so many things. Just to say, look, it's about time that the market had a pullback that took in other areas like the semiconductors, like the areas that were really good. And I, I think that's healthy. I don't think it's a bad thing. I do, too. Good. Thank you, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. Always appreciate it. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, so that's all in Seminole. Now we're looking at question came in, a couple of questions. Uh, the one question that I've been thinking about for the last two, three weeks, um, and I've been trying to do that for my subscribers to my opening call with a very long 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it's almost like a webinar for my vi for my video overview on the weekend. Um, and the question came in, well, a couple of questions over the last week, but certainly even today in Tiger uh, Tiger YouTube. Um, hi, Basil. Are you planning on doing a webinar anytime soon? Uh, yes, I am. I thought I'd cover a lot during my, um, uh, I thought I'd cover a lot during my uh, webinar, during my videos, my overview video on the weekends, but there are a lot of technical things that I'd like to go through as a lesson, as, as, as kind of where we are and what we're looking at in chart patterns coming into the next two weeks. I don't know when, but absolutely, I am thinking about it. Just got a, I had a really busy schedule and I was had to wait for my eye to heal a little bit, which is actually not the eye, but it's the forehead and everything's coming back just to normal. So let's go to uh, Sharky in the den. Hi, Sharky. How are you? Uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Basil. How are you? I got a little, a little bit of a scratchy throat here, but, uh, so I just, um, you know, want to look at the QQQs and, and see where we could potentially be headed and, um, in that area and and you know the smh if this is really breaking here and then you know some of the short vehicles uh for that or or have they just gotten out of you know uh you know out of town and you know miss missed the train on them and, and you know just your thoughts on all that basil okay <laughs> okay so this is what we're looking at here the qqq the index 100 which has a number of components that are very important, not just the fact that it's the QQQ, the MDX 100. You've got Apple, which Apple is in the Dow, Apple's in the Qs, Apple's in the S&P. And yes, Apple just about to take out the left side low in an arch formation. 182.13 was the high back in December. And then on the 4th of January, what does it do? It goes to 182.94. I mean, I've been talking about this for months, I've been saying, watch these double tops. They're not just a clue, but they are pure evidence of resistance and the rolling over in, uh, the corrective process. So here we are in the arch formation, and, and we'll use that just for the moment to say, look, Apple's a fantastic company. Apple's in a fantastic situation right now. <clears throat> it's just uh, a dozen points or so of its all-time high, maybe 20 points, no, less than that. Um, uh, where can it go? Well, you know, it could have a, a pretty decent uh, ra um, a reversal that takes time as well as some price. So the whole 160 to 155 area. So that's going to impact the QQQs and impact the Dallas and impact the S&P. But just to look at the Qs themselves, that leg G says C in the monthly chart, leg G, and I was going to use uh, Home Depot as a, a I had questions about where, in using your alternate count, where does a G fail to go, G slash C to a D, but is absolutely a G top? Well, this is going to become one because the, the weekly chart is at G. 
I, I didn't even put the alternate count in because I felt strongly that this was going to be a double, uh, be a top of some some duration, whether it's just short term or long term, I'm not sure. But in the weekly chart, and here we are under support. Now we can start talking about what will be the major support area. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're back with Sharky looking yeah. at... Uh, we're looking at the QQQs. So in my Chapman Wave automated uh, <clears throat> levels for support in the QQQ, I actually don't have <clears throat> until we hit, come, come. What's going on? There it is. 370.05 and today's low is 369.31. That's the first one in the daily. <clears throat> I don't have in the 120 minute chart. I have 345.69 <clears throat> in the weekly. <clears throat> Nothing yet until three, oh, just way down in the monthly chart in the 347 level. <clears throat> so those are the levels I'm looking at. At any point, you can get a nice bounce. 378 would be very strong resistance if there was a more, more than a bounce. But in the meantime, I'm starting to look at the weekly chart. I don't, I have all these resistance levels. Look at these beautiful resistance levels right at the highs. And I have very little in the way of support. And that means it needs a little time to start building the numbers at the bottom. So I'm just looking at this, and I would just have to say to you, having closed, uh, if this week it closes underneath the QQQs, close under 370, let's call it 374, 
Um, I okay. actually like to say 373. Then there's a chance we're going to get a one to one to the downside, and that would take it for a test of the left side low of 350. That's a that's a long way down, 20 points. Mm. But it might take a couple of weeks to do that, or it could be a couple of days. You never know. But that's kind of what I'd be looking at for the full arch formation in the uh, weekly chart. Most importantly, by Friday, if for whatever reason, I don't care what it is, if there's just a sudden trigger for a strong bounce, if the Qs manage to even touch 386 to 388, that is really impressive action. And that says you're now using more time than price. But if this weakness continues in tomorrow, it's going to be price and time. Hope that helps you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that helps. Thanks very much. And uh, and, and, and some, some tickets to Hawaii or something. <laughs> and look off the old cough. Thank you for calling. So, folks, Dow's on 548. Uh, watch out. You don't want the VIX 